Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Whatever This Is, a show on Comic Book Breakdown where I, Ben, and my co host, Efren, are breaking down WandaVision episodes. We're about a day late on this one than we'd like to be, but work comes first for us, unfortunately. 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 Um, but we're here now. Uh, I just watched the episode last night. You watched it yesterday. Yesterday as well. Yeah, during my lunch. Uh, before we get into the episode, I, I read this online. It's about the previous episode. I just thought this was cute. Yes. Where the scene where they add Pietro into the narrative mm -hmm. was technically a post credits scene. As a nod oh, to like the Marvel I, I movies. Guess, I guess that makes sense because the credits were rolling while vision and wanda were arguing yeah i don't i don't know if that was their intent like within the show to do a yeah. nod to marvel's post credit scenes yeah. i thought it was cute i was like they saved the big surprise for after the credits again because <laughs> like i've i have fast forwarded through all the credits for every episode hoping for something and there's nothing it's just yeah. bilingual credits and bilingual credits yeah. but I, I did the that's same fine. i did the same thing too because there was at least seven and a half minutes left so I was like, maybe there's an end credit scene. No, it was nothing but international credits and everything. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just thought that was really cute. Yeah, I thought that was nice too. Which, you know, it's funny because, you know, last week we were talking about episode five. You know, we were talking about no spoilers. But it's been a week, so we could talk about it. Now. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so let me start off by saying, like, this guy right here, he absolutely hates the Fox X-Men movies. Okay? <laughs> Can't stand him. So when I first watched the episode five and we were, they revealed Evan Peters as Pietro, you know, I was probably like everybody else. Like, Oh my God, this is crazy. Like, damn Marvel, man, you know, Marvel. They're a bunch of smart cats, you know, and everything. Right. So I watched the episode with this dude. You keep pointing at me. And I'm that, waiting for like the ball to drop. And, and, and that is, and I'm like, like where does the not, gun come not, out? It's Shit. not a huge drop, but it's uh, to me, I thought it was hilarious. So at the end of the episode, you know, I'm looking at you, and I was like, well, let me see his reaction. I wonder if he kind of got as excited as I did. So as soon as they no. show Evan Peters no. as Pietro, this is the dude's, re this no. is Ben's reaction as, he, as soon as they show him. Oh. <laughs> that's gross. Oh, I, get to, I would love to have been able <laughs> so to like, see that outside of myself. Yeah. So like, I'm like, oh my God, how did I know this? I've known this dude for how long? And he absolutely hates the X-Men movies. So I should not have been surprised by his reaction when he saw Evan Peters as Quicksilver. Look, look, the, <laughs> the biggest, the biggest reason, gross. especially like, call, gross. especially calling it gross. That was your reaction. The, that is gross. The biggest right. reason that I think it's gross is the idea of connecting the MCU films to the Fox X-Men films disgusts me. <laughs> uh, the, I've, I've, I've long considered doing like breakdowns of the X-Men movies just of in terms of like why I don't like them. I'm assuming you would have a field day. It, it's, that's the thing is it would be like 12 episodes of just me vomiting hate and vitriol yes. at, at the microphone and I don't think that would be fun. It wouldn't be fun for me. It would yeah. be painful. What's sad about that is there are more bad X-Men movies than there are good X-Men movies. Yeah. And that's what's sad about and it. And I'm counting the original animated X-Men movie uh, with Kitty Pride. Uh, Pride of the X-Men? Pride of the X-Men. That, that was like half an hour long. Yeah. And it's yeah. still better than the Fox X-Men yes, movies. And Wolverine's Australian in that. Yeah. So, like... So, dude, <laughs> in terms okay, of... What, what if I have to pick... Like, uh, oh my god, what did he say? Um, Nothing stands out other than Toad sounding like a complete waste He's like, of space. So, so the kid got a job done, but that don't make her an X-Men. Yeah. No. X-Men. 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 Yeah, He's an X-Men. Yeah, that, that was actually great. Yes. Um, but no, that's... I don't, I don't want to see these two things connected, even and especially with all the rumors going on online that we're going to get the multiverse. And the multiverse isn't just going to be like here's the MCU and the realities within it, yes. but the yeah, MCU-verse yeah. connects to the Fox-verse, connects to the Sony-verse, connects to the New Line Cinema-verse. I don't want it. I, I just I don't hope want they don't make a huge deal about it to where, like, oh, we're going to get, like, the actors and actresses that were in the Fox X-Men movies, and we're going to we're gonna bring those people back. No, cast new people for the X-Men. Yes. Yeah. Please do that, MCU. I, I want... Believe as... as, as oh, as much as everybody else wants there to be good MCU X-Men movies, I want it to. I really do. 
Yeah. But I want new actors. I want new stories. I want fresh stories. I want the focus to be on more than three characters for nine films. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm the one character that I'm really cool with them leaving, leaving as is, is Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. Be- Absolutely. Because Deadpool as a character breaks pretty much all storytelling conventions anyways. Yes. So I have no problem with him being like, hey, I'm in the MCU now. This is weird. Whoa, aren't I funny? That's fine. <laughs> Because he's going to do great. Yes, he is. I don't want Hugh Jackman anymore. I don't want Hugh Patrick Jackman Stewart. Should be absolutely. Done. I don't want Ian McKellen. As much as we love those guys, yeah. as actors, and they're superb actors. This is are. this is not me crapping on the work that they do as actors, or even um, now I feel bad because now I'm I'm way more familiar with those actors than I am the recent actors, um, James McAvoy. Or Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to remember his name. <laughs> I will. You um, know I will. Um, I don't want I don't mind them becoming a part of the MCU in the same way Evan Peters did I don't want them to continue to be their characters again we're, we're getting a whole new interpretation I assume I yes. hope fingers crossed I hope let's see new actors <clears throat> I don't want to be tied to what came before and thankfully what we've seen with Pietro in this episode doesn't seem to be no another multi, a, an alternate universe version of Pietro um, he does. He does straight up say that he remembers dying, and he he even says like a chump, which I thought was kind of great. Uh, he says, you know, he remembers being gone, that he heard Wanda calling for him, and yeah. so he showed up he showed here. Up here. Um, which, if we still believe that Wanda caused that to happen, I could see literally. Sure, maybe this is his soul being transplanted in the body of somebody who lives in the MCU. And then he got brought into the breach or was put into the breach or this was done by whoever set all of this up. And I still maintain that somebody set all this up. And in this episode, we even have Wanda admitting she doesn't know how she any of this happened. happened. Yeah, when Pietro asked her. Um, but that's as as someone who's always had a weird character crush on Quicksilver in the comics because he's out of Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. He's always been more tied to the X Men. He was a member of X Factor in the nineties. Yeah, she was more Avengers. Yeah, he's yeah. he's always been the one that other characters have been like, "You're the son of Magneto," and he's gone, "Please stop, just stop. I'm not. I am, but I'm not. Could you, could you forget that <laughs> part? That down I'm not a mutant terrorist like he is. Um, so I've always had a character crush on Pietro, and I I was really frustrated that they killed him in Age of Ultron. I liked the idea of them bringing him back because I even when we were talking about. Um, episode three, we had brought up why wouldn't she bring back Pietro yeah. if she's creating this happy, Pleasantville life? And even he brings up like, yeah, why wouldn't you bring me back if you were making Utopia, except to be haunted by the tragic yeah. history of your past, which which he still is, yeah, yeah, because that scene when all of a sudden and it's and and the, and the interesting thing is. It, and it doesn't happen until she kind of like um, harkens back to thinking about the past when it seems like whenever she talks about like tragic things that have happened in her past, that's when like, I guess reality breaks through her nail drops. Exactly. Yeah. Because when he asked her about her past and about how she wasn't sure how she created this whole utopia for herself, when she looks at him again, He's dead. He has bullet holes in him. Yeah. And the same with Vision, he has no pupils. You know, and she's like, it's like she's terrified by it, but then she goes back and then he's normal again. So it seems like whenever she talks about like tragic events that happened to her past, then all of a sudden reality kicks in for a second. It's like her mind, you know, is fixated on like the reality that she knows is out there, but not the reality that she wants it to be. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she fixes herself. Either she fixes herself or somebody else fixes her mind for her, and all of a sudden, like, it's boom. It's it's back to where, like, her reality sets in. And, that's, and I, he's alive again. There's, I do, I do <clears throat> still think that's a bit of both. I think, I think Wanda wants to believe that Westview is the way things are, but I do think that there's the moral part of Wanda that knows it's wrong and knows that it's not real. She does. And every time when it slips like that, she she honestly has the choice of you can continue to buy into this or you could do something about mm-hmm. it. And she would rather buy into it because at least 
her husband's alive, her brother's alive, she's got these kids. Life seems great if she continues to just be like, I'm just going to pretend nothing's wrong. And it, it continues to reward her for doing that, it seems like. <clears throat> um, it's especially weird, like, you know, I've, I've been operating under the idea that Vision is a dead corpse that she's animating. Um, but well, well, yeah, that explains, you know, when he gets out of the... Um you know, enter the, the hex, you know, the energy field that he starts breaking apart. Well, he starts to break apart, but he doesn't seem to have any of the same injuries that he had when he died. Yeah. So he's not reverting to what he used to be. Well, he doesn't even remember that he's an Avenger. Yeah, which was really cool. Which I, was really I want to come back to too. the Agnes moment. Yeah. Um, And that, that particular moment reaffirmed for me that in episode five, um, the statement of everything that's in here is physically real even yeah. if it's not what it used to be. So Vision's body, at least, this this tells me that Vision's body has been restored. So we, if he leaves the field, he's not just going to crumble into a, a separated corpse with his forehead crushed. Yeah. Because otherwise, that I don't... There's an inconsistency there for me. Because the dead Vision that we saw when Wanda saw him was his mm -hmm. forehead crushed by Ultron, yeah. or by Thanos, I'm sorry. And then when we saw Pietro... If we were seeing actually dead Pietro, shouldn't he have been... The logic to me would that should have been Taylor Johnson's body. Yeah. Even if all you do is you see him sitting there as a corpse, and then she blinks and it flashes back to Evan Peters' Pietro. That, to me, would show a, the inconsistency of this isn't his dead body with a glamour on it. This is something else, and she's seeing... I don't know. What am I trying to say here? I don't know. But it could it could just be that like it's her just um, you know imagining Pietro dead himself because because even Pietro brings up your dead husband can't get any deader yeah he acknowledges that he died and he doesn't know how he's back <clears throat> well plus the plus the times when she's questioning like you know do you remember when we were children, you know, and this happened and that happened, and he was like, oh, you're trying to test say, me, aren't even you? He's all, you're testing me. Yeah, all, you're testing me, but he never answers the question. Yeah. You know, so he, Pietro himself, no, it's not, Vision himself had to find out that it was Wanda, but yet Pietro, as soon as he went in there, he already knows that she's doing this. Yeah. Like, how would he know that he, you know, she herself is doing this unless for some reason either he knows something or somebody brought him in and he's i don't want to say he's like a some sort of spy but you know it, it's just it's just interesting that like he already knows what's going on i had, he doesn't mind it i had the same you know? thought for for a couple of reasons because one we've seen that agnes realizes she's in a tv show yes. from episode five um, when Wanda spoke to Herb in this episode, when things are going wrong and Wanda's kind of like figuring out that Vision lied to her. Is there anything for me you want me to change? Anything you like, want me to change. change. Not yeah. anything I could do for you, which would be a more like casual yeah. neighborly thing to say. Anything you want me to change to me is that same level of he knows he's in the show. Yeah, and she even like gives him a glance of weirdness like. And again, she's still like, why would you say that? Like, yeah, I don't exactly. I don't understand what your role here is. And now we have Pietro, who really obviously knows that he's in a TV show. Yes. To the point that he knows the role that he's fulfilling. Um, part of me would argue from a story perspective, these people are working with or for whatever it is that set this up to begin with. And they're facilitating Wanda's delusion to keep her happy. The trade-off there is Pietro's acting more like an agent of chaos and disrupting things. He's not helping to smooth anything over. Yeah. He's pointing out inconsistency. He's saying, like, he legitimately says, you're handling the moral implications of this really well. And even MCU Pietro, I don't think, would have been that dismissive yeah. of that kind of reaction. How is, how is what Wanda is doing to this town any different than Tony Stark dropping a bomb on Sokovia yeah. at some point? Like, you're still ruining people's lives. Um, and I can't, I couldn't see a reason why whatever force is setting this up would add in an element that's going to cause things to fall apart as much as Pietro's presence has. And that's because he, he does the scene where he talks to Wanda and he's like, come on, you can tell me how, how did you do this? Yeah. Like, it's crazy. And it, she has no idea. It feels like 
it it felt to, it almost felt to me like somebody from Sword who got sent in and managed to like I don't know adopt this identity was looking for information to figure out what was going on like who but, but then the, you know how, yeah. did he, how does he have powers how does he have powers how would they become specifically Pietro because if if they did that would imply they have control over the hex mm-hmm. greater than Wanda does which would lead me to think that they're whoever's doing this. And if that's the case, wouldn't they know how Wanda did this? Like, why would why would the person who set this up try to find information about how they set this up? Yes. So that that to me just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, I, I, it throws me for a complete loop. Yeah. In, in terms of the background it plot. It's, it's very interesting that a lot of the people there, they kind of know they're trapped in Wanda's Oh, the woman reality. with the tear? That who was putting was, up the Halloween decorations? That when Vision visited that part of town, <sighs> that was so creepy. The, the woman put it up to decoration with a single tear, and then you see, I guess it was her husband moving yeah, the pumpkin, moving the jackal over lantern. and over, and over and over. You know, it's almost like um, it was like literally a dead part of town. You know, I figured to figuratively speaking well and it's such a cool way too to frame the episode as a halloween episode yeah where that was so even, creepy even without really and no one was moving yeah like, and that was that was the thing like the the moments with wanda felt genuine and heartfelt and there was good character and the kids were fun and then you get those moments with vision and it's it was legitimately creepy and it's one of those things to me that's so cool from a storytelling perspective that you don't need body horror you don't need a murderer on the loose with an axe or a cool soundtrack. Good, creepy yeah. imagery is good, creepy imagery. Yes. And if that's, you know, we know that kids should be running around on Halloween trick-or-treating and Vision's walking into a part of the town where nobody's moving at and, all. And there was one, that there was, was, there was one oh. part, okay, so, and uh, I'm, I'm going back to episode five. There was one scene in episode five where Vision's like, where are the kids in the town? Why are Billy and Tom the only kids? But then all of a sudden, in episode six, here are all these kids. And even Pietro was like, where are all these kids coming from? Even Pietro points yeah, it out. Yeah, where, where are all these kids at? Where have they like, been all this time? Just home sleeping in their beds? And even exactly. Wanda's looking around going, I don't... Oh, yeah, don't that's know. true. Like, all of a sudden, like, yeah. all these kids out of sure. nowhere. Just came out of nowhere. And the part where Vince turns into himself, and then he flies up... And he, he's, you know, scrolling around the town, and you see all of the lights, all of the liveliness in one area of the town. And all of a sudden, he scopes to the other part of town, and there's darkness, there's silent, there's nothingness. And then he goes down, and he sees Agnes in the car, just standing there, you know, on the corner of Ellis Avenue, the street. Warren Ellis not, I guess? This, I don't know. I, I had the same thought, because Warren Ellis, to the best of my knowledge, has written the Avengers once, once. Yeah. in a graphic novel and like that was it yeah um i don't believe he's ever told a story with vision wanda um spectrum may maybe okay mm-hmm. maybe spectrum who's monica rambo in the comics she gets light-based superpowers monica was a member of next wave mm-hmm. which was written by warren ellis it's, oh, it's possible, like, a little nod. It, it could maybe, be. Because... Like, it, it still frustrates me a little bit, because I would rather have seen something for, like, Wanda or Vision's creators. Like, why yeah. doesn't Roy Thomas get a nod or something like that? Especially since Warren Ellis got a shout-out in Iron Man 3 with President Ellis yeah. because of the extremist plot line. Um, but I had the same thought, where I was yeah. like, well, Warren Ellis? Maybe? Well, um, yeah, what's interesting is she's just there. She's just stayed silent in her car on the street that Wanda warned Billy and Tommy earlier not to cross. And there's there's so much other other than the stuff that they outright tell us is disturbing about the Agnes scene. Um, yeah. Like, the Very idea of... disturbing. Like, because Vision even asks, like, why are you here? And she's like, I took a wrong turn. And he goes, in the town the you grew, grew up, up in? in? And <laughs> even, even, fuck that, in a town where you are doing the bidding of Wanda or the bidding of someone else... What would send you this direction? The yes, one way out. Exactly. Like, was, was Agnes subconsciously trying to escape and she just can't now and so she's frozen? Like, it, it feels like a plot hole and I don't, I don't feel like the show does plot holes. It's, it's very clearly supposed to be a, a mystery. No, there's definitely um, a reason. You know, especially when Vision touches her head and, you yeah. know, she's panicking. 
And she asked him, my dad? He's like, no, why would you think that? Yeah, that was great. Because oh you God. are. He's like, I'm what? Dead. You're dead. And dead. it's like, you were an dead. Avenger. And he's dead. like, what's an Avenger? Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Th- and that was a great. Yeah, she's like, dead. And that dead. was a great, this isn't Vision brought back to life moment. Yeah. This is, this is Vision as like either programmed or built or written by somebody to function in this role because he doesn't remember life outside of Westview, which is really cool. Again, like the, the whole idea of her brother showing up, why would yeah, you know him? Like, like Vision's being uh, reanimated. And, and it's interesting because Vision's, you know, an android, but Pietro was a real person. So what would the differences be, you know, of reanimating Vision as opposed to like Pietro being brought back that's and that's why i say i think if anything i think this is pietro's soul in somebody else's body it's possible because uh, again if something's in the hex it is real matter so either she is just animating the what should be the corpse of taylor johnson which is why i was like i would flash to that corpse and be like this is what we're hinting at this person's literally a zombie being piloted by wanda but then when vision exits the field the wounds that he takes aren't him reverting to his dead state it's the Mm. field ripping him apart i think that's more what the red sheen on the field is it's less it's one part to keep things from coming in and another part to keep things from going out yeah um and so rather than since vision's trying to push through it just tears him apart instead because even though he's being ripped apart um the parts that are being ripped from him are going back into the energy field yes you know and and what like and we like, what a great... For a dude who's not himself, 100%, yeah. at least, what a great... Like, the Vision is still a hero. I'll, yeah. I'll fully admit, for I don't have a lot of history with the Avengers in the comics, and I've always thought that the Vision was super boring. Um, I get it. It's the robot with a soul, whatever. I don't yeah. care. I don't care. Um, <laughs> but, like, never have I cared more than in this interpretation in the MCU and seeing him yes. as like the one guy who knows something's wrong, even if he doesn't know what it is and he's willing to die to lose everything. That's why he was being to help part. those he was people. Like, Save these people. That was so yeah, cool. It was, it was. It was what a great heroic. character moment. You know, God Darcy damn. is like, why isn't anybody helping him? Like, and look at him. I he's... thought, I thought for sure Darcy's getting shot when, when she was like, I'm going to stay behind guys. I was yeah. like, you are being found and you're going to get shot, lady. Like, this does not end well for you. They better, and, they better and, not fucking shoot Darcy. And thankfully, this ends in a way different <laughs> way for her. Yeah. But, uh... That's why uh, I, mean, I told you earlier, I'm, I'm wondering what she got turned into because they never showed her, Yeah. you know... Well, and especially... Something. So and we, she was handcuffed, so I don't know if that's going to have anything to do with the circus. Yeah. You know, it's escape, funny how... Escape this, artist? How, it's funny, maybe. Oh, that could be possible. Oh, maybe she like wakes up in a vat of water. Like, oh my god, trying to escape. Oh that would be god. crazy, wouldn't it? You Jesus, know? it's crazy that like you know Wanda turns sword into a circus. Yeah, you know, a bunch I of clowns. That was a trip. Bunch of clowns. That's exactly. super good. Oh you know, yeah, god. it was. It was. It was super good. It really was. But that was um. Oh, uh, what I was gonna say before we got off the Pietro stuff too far. Um, like you said, I love the nod to his his comics costume the with the bolt across and the then the hair. the hair so dumb um but again i love it yeah um it's I'm, great and i'm glad i'm glad that this episode we got what what you'd call comics accurate yeah. costuming i just love how the mcu knew that like you know it's silly it's you know a sitcom it's halloween so it. we're gonna get away with the silliness yeah. here and we're gonna make him look like his counterpart with the crazy ass hair and everything. I even loved you know? with the vision. They didn't really have any idea of what he was in terms yeah. of like, what are you, Dad? And he's just like, uh, clearly um, I'm. And he, again, even they were just like, no idea. Even Pietro. Oh God, I can't remember everything that he's he guessed. Yeah, but, he throws you know, a couple it was of them hilarious. Out. Yeah, it was it was really funny. And that's you know we've this episode I'm was a super. I'm a lucha a lucha wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> That was great. Memo gusto. I was like, oh, I don't know much Spanish, but I got you, Wanda. Yeah. Um, so with this episode, we've seen us move into the 90s. Yes. I'm assuming 90s. The the whole... Because it's Malcolm in the Middle yeah, inspired. Yeah, the whole Malcolm. Like, as soon as the Which credits was great. started and I saw I show Wanda in the bathroom where she's mad, I'm like, this is Malcolm in the Middle, isn't yeah. it? Oh, my God, I love it. And then all of a sudden, when Tommy starts talking, I'm like, he's supposed to be Malcolm. I'm like, oh, this is great. And I did really feel like Tommy and Billy reminded me of, ah, 
I'm not going to remember the two brothers, but like they legit looked a bit like the kids from Malcolm in the Middle to me. Not Frankie Reese Muniz. and Dewey. Yes. Oh my God. Like, I can't really like, remember that's, that. Good, ju- good job. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Thank you. I remember Frankie Muniz and Brian Cranston. Yeah. And that's because Cranston got famous afterwards How and I don't remember anybody was Brian else. Brian Cranston's name. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but they, they did a really good job. In this episode, them talking to the cameras was super fun. Yes. Them dressed in costumes reminiscent of Wiccan and Speed in the comics was super cute. That was awesome. Uh, yes. it, I it, thought it was great. It does make me nervous towards them having more of a future because part of me feels like this is the closest we're going to get type of thing. Um, you never know. And that's this could just be an illusion yeah. to where we're going. Um, I'm just, I'm so used to like, you know, with the original X-Men movies and stuff like those kind of movies keep being like, we'll allude to the future that we'll yeah. never get to and then do something else at I mean, some other there, point. There's about like what, three episodes left. So you never know. They could still age up Yeah, from now till then. And then somehow. we, we saw them get powers in yes. this episode, which is really powers, cool. Which is really great. Um, which, um, I love, uh, the part <laughs> when, Herb is getting those messages. He's like, what? Everybody's stealing the candy. Quicksilver. <laughs> what? They're smashing all the smashing pumpkins. All pumpkins. <laughs> Quicksilver. Like, that, <laughs> that was so great. You know, the fact that they still had all the humor, especially with Evan Peters, Pietro, you know, still being kind of the way he was in the Fox X-Men movies. Like, being much more fun, I guess, than 100%. Aaron Johnson's That's, Pietro. If, if I know? had... If I have a complaint between Peters and Johnson's versions of the characters, mm-hmm. Peters is way more fun. Yes. And fun will always trump accurate in the, in a comic mm-hmm. book related movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it does. And I mean, we did see it in Taylor Johnson's character. He did when he was like, well, you didn't see that coming? Yeah. He, or, he did know. have a little bit of that like, man, I'm better than you. Come on. Yeah. Man. I got the, the arrogant, like, you just, so, you know, keep up, old man. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if I see him stealing candy and smashing pumpkins, but yeah. then there's a part where how much of that is sitcom too. Yeah, being forced into this situation, he just has to roll with it. Speaking of which, and you know they put this in there purposely when Evan Peters says this line and then he leaves and then Wanda goes, "Kick ass." Yeah, come on, Evan Peters and Aaron Johnson, as everybody knows, were both in Kick Ass. Yeah. And they both played Quicksilver. So when as soon as she said that, everybody was like, I see what you did there. Well, and, and there's also some fun, too, with the idea of a sitcom. Like, you wouldn't have been able to say Kick-Ass yeah. on any of the other previous iterations of the show. Like, the show, yes, assuming it had been on true. since the 50s. So that's like, true. With 50s, 60s, it's, 70s, and 80s. It's yeah. a cool way to kind of modernize it as well as going, like, this isn't, you know, yeah. you're very clearly a different type of show than what it used to be. We can say ass on TV now. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, everybody. Whoa, he said ass on TV. Whoa. Nowadays, they say shit on TV. Whoa, the future's crazy. Yeah, oh my God. So much worse. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, yeah, exactly. You can that, curse on TV, but everybody gets butt hurt even more, so, you know. That's, um, so we've, we've reached Malcolm in the middle. Yes. Which again, I which think, is, which t- I tend to think of as more of a like early two thousand show than in nineties. It kind of was. So I don't know and what maybe, your next decade jump like is. Like maybe because I thought, and I told you to you earlier, because it was the nineties, I thought they were kind of gonna go in that real world vibe because sure. that was like some of the that was more in line of kind of the top shows in the nineties were real world. So I thought they were gonna be like you know this is a true story, a true story, you know of of a sorceress and an android living with their two kids, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, that could have been cool. But like, the, I, I still thought the Malcolm Middle thing was great, yeah. even though that was more of early 2000s. The only reason I don't think they would have done something like the real world is real world was cable TV. Yeah. So there would have been, true. don't get me wrong, there was still a huge audience for it. Oh, but, yeah. But I, less of a like publicly recognized yeah. audience than I guess something that like goes Malcolm back in the to, Middle. I guess that goes back to what I said the last time that like, you know, oh, and and it even shows when um, I guess when Evan uh, when Pietro talks about like you you remember that time and we were kids and how childhood and in like, Sokovia yeah childhood in Sokovia she gives him a herring yeah and it, even when it shows like the the old raggedy lady giving them the fish you saw in the background like the I guess the the t- terrible stuff they went through in Sokovia like stuff was on fire in the background people were running and yeah. stuff during Halloween and. 
I thought, like, seeing that, I thought back to our last episode when I mentioned that, like, this is possibly the reason why Wanda's thinking about shows like this is this is the only stuff they had to watch when yeah. they were young. And, and and based on their ages, like, I feel like Malcolm in the Middle would have been more of a watch than, like, Bewitched yeah. or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bewitched and everything. But, like, maybe they only had, like, five or six channels sure. to watch when they were growing up. One of them was, you know, an old, like, I'd... Nick at Night sitcom type Man, of channel. I grew up in rural Ohio. I had four channels. Yeah, we had see, three, five, here. eight, and sixty-four. Period. Yeah, I had like eight channels when we grew yeah. up, and like I said before, you know, we we watched like stuff like The Monkees, you know, when we were young. Sure. We were we were you know me and my siblings grew up in the eighties, and we were watching shows back from the sixties and seventies. Sure. We watched the old Adam West Batman, certain things like that, and compared to I guess what Wanda and Pietro had growing up, that wasn't bad. So just thinking of that and them having, like, an old school TV yeah. and having only, like... And they're just picking up whatever is yeah, being broadcast on Sokovian TV. Yeah. And they could only watch, like, Bewitched and the Dick Van Dyke show and the Brady Bunch and, you know, Malcolm in the Middle, you know, certain things like that. Just growing up. Man, weird to think that know. Malcolm in the Middle is that old. Oh god! Don't wow. get me started. Man. Wow! I, I would have never expected Brian Cranston like to become such a high-profile yeah. actor. Like, like playing a, Hal. And I feel bad saying it, but like an actor with like a capital A kind of thing. Like he's yeah. not just a dude on TV; he's an actor. Yeah, like, and it shows how brilliant he is, you know. Yeah. Because Hal was, you know, I watched Malcolm in the Middle a lot, and Hal was always my favorite character because of how how much of a idiot he was in the show, but he was hilarious. You know, and it just goes to show, like, how great Brian Cranston is yeah. as an actor. I uh, I saw this online. I didn't make the connection myself. Because, like, when they show Wanda and Pietro, like, in costume, yeah. that's I was like, I don't, I don't know what you're supposed to be. Like, you don't look like anything. You just look like kids in overcoats. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what this is. And somebody else um, on the MCU group we're part of on Facebook shared an image of um, braided hair, oh, geez, brain, Black Widow, and then Nick Fury. And it's the same kind of braid on Wanda with red hair. Mm. And then Pietro's got, like, the eye patch is on the wrong eye. And, of course, he's white, which I almost would say would be almost more of a nod to classic Nick Fury from oh. the comics. And I was like... When they were kids. Yeah. They, they wouldn't have known about Black Widow or yeah. Nick Fury. Well, so is this a nod to something? I don't know. But I, I thought it was cute if that's the idea. Yeah. Like, oh, that's so weird. Yeah, I thought that, that, that is pretty there's, it, it almost, I don't know, I don't know. Um, something, when you had mentioned, like, the theme of being, like, she's a sorcerer, the, oh, the, the angry continuity nerd first goes, she's not a sorcerer, she manipulates reality. Like, bleh, bleh, she hasn't had training. Like, any of, any of the stuff that angry nerd wants to categorize yeah. everything. But then this commercial with Yo Magic, that the single creepy. most disturbing commercial so <laughs> oh far. My. God, I'm like, this is a little kid, and, and you're I'm, gonna, it's a claymation kid. It's super cute. But you're gonna kill him off, uh, just because he can't get, he can't get the lid open. Well, and that's the thing that confuses me with it is like the the rest of these have all felt like nods to Wanda's life, and if the idea here is you need magic in order to survive, and without it you'll die. Is that a nod to Vision and Pietro situation? Is yes. it Wanda's situation? Uh, and and is that and if that's the case, is the shark a visual metaphor exa- for whoever came to Wanda and went, "You need this." That's exactly what I was gonna say when I first saw the commercial. Oh. I was thinking like because it's the MCU. I'm like, what does the shark represent? Who does the shark represent? You give him something and he just takes off. But yet, surfs away. You, you, you give him the thing that'll help him survive, but yet he doesn't know how to use it. He can't, you know, figuratively get the magic open yeah. to use it, so he, so he dies. dies. I can't, and I, I can't remember what um, the quote was at the end. You know, I, I can't remember it. Because, oh, yeah, it was yo magic, and then yeah, something, something, something. like, something. yeah, I, exactly. And I've noticed that every quote at the end means something. Oh, sure. You know, like the, the Zemo thing, you know, he'll make time for you. Yeah. You know, like the... Um, Lagos. Lagos thing, you know, yeah. When you which, have to clean up a mess, you accidentally create Which, and I didn't even pick up on, even when we discussed it, 
um, you know, the, the person uses the paper towels to like wipe up some spilled wine or whatever. Yeah. And then my brain was like, that's a metaphor for blood on her hands. Oh my God. No. How did I miss that? How did I miss that? Like, but again, like this is, this is one of the things that I love about really tightly written stories is because you control everything. So if something makes it on screen, you meant for it to get on screen. And for a, lo a lot of stuff, it doesn't matter. Like I don't watch WandaVision and I'm like, the grass is green. What does the green grass mean? <gasps> Who it could mean? No, it doesn't matter what the yeah. grass means. I don't care. But stuff like that, where they're clearly telling you something, oh, yeah. that's that's the kind it, of stuff that I got Jones' it, for. It was just oh, that's so great. creepy, even in claymation. Form, Yo, magic. When the kid was just trying to open it and open it, and slowly, slowly he he's starts dying. decomposing oh, God. and dying. But yet, even when he's dead and a skeleton, he still has the magic in his hand. Yeah. You know, it's, oh my God. And that's the thing. The shark goes in, here, here's the magic for you. And then he takes off. And then the kid's like, eh, eh, eh. he can't get the magic open. You know, and, and, and it's like what you said. It seems like without magic, like, they can't survive. And maybe that's some sort of metaphor about Pietro and Vision. Well, it's without and magic. It's almost a degree, because there's a, a couple, if you, if you go into it looking for metaphors, you can find them. Because the kid's trapped on an island. Trapped on an island. Wanda's trapped in Westview. Yes. If she leaves, she loses what she's looking at as her life. And, and she even said that, like, she couldn't remember anything except darkness. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. In, in her, her depression and her grief. She, she was in isolation. Yes. In herself. She said she's never felt more alone yes. than, than recently. So that, so that island could be a metaphor. Yeah, she's okay. she is an island unto herself. Yes, something shows up, goes. You can use magic to make this better, and without the continued sustaining effect of magic, all of this will fall away. And I I do think that leads to the idea of if Wanda doesn't keep doing this, it'll all it'll all die. Yeah. Um, who that metaphor is, I don't know. Classically, we don't have like the MCU doesn't have a lot of sharks. Like <laughs> you you've got. Um, Maybe not even as like a Namor villain. Do you have like a sh you've Tiger Shark? Okay, you've got Tiger Shark, who's a half man, half shark. He bites people. Y yeah. You get it. Um, I, 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 the shark could just be a metaphor for and that's, someone else. I would assume. I was. I would guess the idea is this is a predator offering Wanda what she wants, and it's not what she needs. It's almost like the. It's like. The, the shark, per se, is giving her the tools to survive. She just has to know how to use them. Yeah. You know? And she's misusing them yeah. in Westview. Exactly. Um, and it's, oh, you know, it's causing all kinds of chaos. And, and it's like what they said before in earlier episodes, you know, like her power's never been this, she's never been this strong before. Yeah. You know. And, and even with sudden, Pietro asking, how'd you get, where'd you get, like, the power to do this? And yeah. her going, I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember. But then know. all of a sudden, like a couple minutes later, she uses that power to expand Westview, you know, in desperation because this, Vision is dying. And and, it, and and it makes me wonder, like, either she does want Vision to stay alive because she oh, loves 100%. Vision, yeah, or she needs Vision to be alive to continue this. Yeah. Well, I I think she emotionally needs Vision to be alive because yeah. life isn't worth living without him. Type of deal, like. This is this is the degree to which her grief has driven her. Yeah, there, and there is no life without and him. And I'm wondering that when did she get that dark? Because at the end of Endgame, did she just say that to Clint to kind of make them feel better about you know the events that transpired? Sure. You know because you know they both hugged it out at the end, which I thought was really sweet. You know he talked about mm -hmm. Natasha, she talked about Vision, and they hugged it out, which was great because them and themselves is close because. Back in Age of Ultron, yep. Clint basically saved her life, you know, with the whole speech. And in my opinion, Clint was the most important Avenger in that movie because without him, um, the Avengers, you know, they would have been just separated. Yep. And, you know, he's the one that, like, didn't let her control his they, mind. They needed that time on the farm to calm down yeah. and come back together with a clear head exactly. and, and at least basic goals, which then took them to the rest of the episode. Yeah. And then same thing helped Wanda through. Um, and that, that same idea of you don't have to have superpowers to help people. Yeah. 
And if you have superpowers, you have we're a responsibility facing, to use them exactly. to help people. We're facing an army of robots and having a bow and an arrow, and, and the, city's, and the city is flying. flying. None of this makes sense. You know, but, but I go out there and do it because it, it's, it's my, my job. job. Exactly. You know, if you want to stay here, that's fine. I'll have your brother come and get you. But if you go out there, you are an Avenger. An Avenger. You know, that whole speech completely changed her life around. It really did. And to go from her wanting to control his mind and him not accepting that, you know, I had, I had and him trusting her with it, and then trusting her with it yeah. exactly, and going from there to at the end of Endgame and them, you know, like hugging it out, knowing that like. Without his oh, even in Civil War, he's the one that rescued her from being yeah, you know yeah, trapped in there. So, Clint is you know whether we know it or not, Clint was a huge part of Wanda's life, a huge part of Wanda's life. <clears throat> and without that speech, without you know getting her out, without them talking, like Wanda wouldn't have been the person she was. And that's that to me is like my counter argument because mm-hmm. I I keep doing the same thing where I'm like, when did Wanda get like so morally bankrupt that she was like, I'll just brainwash a town of people. Yeah, and that's that's where I was and that's kind of going to go. And that's yeah. the trade-off I keep coming back to is that moment with Hayward where he's like, she and her brother let themselves be experimented on by Nazis to become super weapons so they could kill people. These, Pietro and Wanda weren't good people to begin with. They, well, they chose to become better, but... How much do you have well, to lose before you you're willing to let that yeah. go? It's well, it's because they suffered such a tragedy on the hands of I guess Tony Stark sure. because you know both of their parents died. Well, and, and look at all the terrible stuff. Wanda lost her brother. She yeah. lost her country. She lost the man that she loved. Ne- you know, next to Thor, she had the most tragic yeah. kind of story. The most the most the immediate. MCU. You're just going to keep losing everything you e- care exactly. about. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so there's. I definitely have the same thing of like we we from a narrative standpoint we always expect our heroes to be paragons. We want everybody to be Steve Rogers in Civil War when mm-hmm. Nick Fury's like, you know, we could save Shield and he goes, "No. There is no saving it. It's rotten to the core. We destroy it, Winter we Soldier. rebuild." Sorry, Winter Soldier. Like that's what we want our heroes to be. I'm but not know. everyone's like that. Yeah, exactly. And Wanda hit that moment of you could choose not to do this or you could do this. And she went, yeah, why she not saw, me? Why can't I have things better? And she goes for it. It's it's like somebody came up to her because it's it's almost like deep down inside her, she was feeling that terrible grief. But at the same time, it's almost like, okay, as hard as it might be, maybe I'm, maybe I'm able to live with this. I don't know. But it's almost like someone came up to her and gave her some sort of proposition. Yeah. I mean... She had to have been so deep in that darkness of isolation that whoever came up to her was like you a know, surfboarding shark. A surfboarding shark came up to that Wanda, manipulated the shit out of her, manipulated the absolute ass ass out of her to be like, you know, I can, I can bring, I can help you bring back Vision. Yeah. You know, I can do all this shit for you. I mean, that that must have been a hell of a pitch for Wanda to go through all this and then trapping people. Yeah. in her own type of false reality. Because she, she to me, still doesn't feel actively cognizant of the fact exactly. that she's controlling everyone. This is also why she keeps seeing dead Vision and yeah. she saw dead Pietro. Yeah. I, I think she's willing to believe otherwise. Again, I don't think she's actively making that decision. So that's, I keep going, again, back and forth on the, is she a morally bankrupt yeah. demoness? Or is she a, a victim whose grief was manipulated by someone else? And typically in comic books, you lean towards the victim because that gives you an out. Because then you can be like, guess what, kids? It was Doctor Doom the whole time. And one is actually a good person. Don't worry about it. it it's almost oh. like sleepwalking through a dream. And then all of a sudden, when some sort of tragedy hits, um, waking, up to, uh, uh, waking up to a nightmare and then recovering yourself and going back to that yes yeah, and you just want to go back to the you dream you just want to go back to the I just dream. want a good night's sleep yeah not even exactly. worry about I it I just want a good night's sleep yeah you know I don't want a waking nightmare I just want to go back Boom. and kill yeah, me exactly it's you know why else would she talked about the um the terrible times and all of a sudden like she sees Vision did yeah and Pietro did you know that's that's not what she wants 
But, you know, as in fact, that's the reality that we live in, but she never wants to live that reality again. Yeah. You know, and somebody manipulated the hell out of her into thinking, you know, I can make this shit disappear if you just work with yep. me. You know, who who but, that person is is still up in the yeah, air. It's still up in the air. I, but it's 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 not without its consequences yeah. to where this person is like, okay, you know, I'm manipulating Wanda, which is I'm taking advantage of her because I know the tragedy that she suffered. You know, at the same time, I know how powerful she is. And yeah. I, like we both believe only somebody as powerful, if not even more powerful, can manipulate Wanda into believing this that you know I can bring back vision and somehow like well, your brother came back well even more for me more than manipulating her because I, I God, this, I, this I, just feels like I don't, I, you could manipulate Wanda mentally well I like, just say manipulate if, real quick because if Zemo like, wanted to set this up I think someone like Baron Zemo could have done this he's intelligent mm-hmm. enough he's cunning enough he's charming enough like he orchestrated the downfall of the Avengers like you could get an intelligent enough person to do this. The things that get me with this are she's she's overpowered from where we last saw her. This isn't just I tricked you into this. This is I gave you the power to do this and in doing so tricked you into the rest of these conditions. Yes. Which which I would uh the Zemo thing, I would make a counter argument as to say the reason why Zemo set that up is because he wanted revenge. Oh, a thousand percent. Whoever's setting this up for Wanda wants something yeah, in that's, return. I'm, I'm not saying this is Zemo. Right, I'm just right. saying no, no, I Wanda know. could be manipulated. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But I know, like, this is serving a purpose for the person who set this whole thing up. Because they yeah. want something, and they know they can't get we it just don't without it Wanda's is. powers. Which, to, to that point, I want to say... I'm. I really think Marvel is just screwing with us at this point with Maybe. Agnes. With with Agnes. Yeah, with Agnes. Because, yeah, because she dressed well. Halloween. She was a witch. She was a witch. Exactly. And, she, and everybody even, thinks she's Agatha Harkness. And she even so. has that moment where she starts laughing and she's doing like the perfect witch laugh. God. Ah, yeah, but we we good. see her freed from Wanda's spell, and you know it. It would if if Agnes with that was Agatha Harkness and she had been sent here with a purpose. I feel like that's the moment you go, Vision, you're a superhero. You can save me. This is my name. This is why I'm here. This is what I was trying to do. And Wanda brainwashed me. Let's get on it. Let's fix this stuff. But she doesn't. She just seems like a scared victim yeah. who's on the same ride as the rest of them, just with a different layer of sitcom programming than the rest of the town gets. Because she's a character as opposed to a background yeah, element. I, 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 also... I, I think Marvel's just going like, we know you want it to be Agatha. I, I do believe screws. that. Yeah. Screws. And that's the thing, too, though. You know, I think, yes, they're doing that. But at the same time, I still think it might be a little misleading. Yeah. I it's, really And that's do. possible. I, I'm just I'm just saying the small stuff. Like, you know, the opening credits, when it's like Malcolm in the middle. She's a part. She's a part of <laughs> those beginning the, credits. The bejeweled butt pants. The bejeweled butt. That says naughty on the butt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, but that's, but that's the thing. She, but... Th- all, out of all the extra, I guess, out of all the extra characters in sure. town, she's the only one that they show basically in the opening credits. Yeah. So they're basically letting you know that like she's not, but it kind of is a part of this. It's family. They're either letting you know that she's important. Yeah. Or they're misleading us to think she's important, so that way we'll go Agatha, 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 yeah. and then because that's you know there were so many theories online about Dottie. Dottie yeah. hasn't, like, appeared at all since, what, episode two, three? I think it was two. Yeah. Um, two. Yeah. Yes, two, two. Who gives a fuck about Dottie? <laughs> Nobody. And he only showed her in a glimpse of part in yeah. episode three. Yeah. You know, so, these you girls know, make me look fat. And then the lights are on. That's oh, what thank, it was. Oh, thank oh, God. Thank God. <laughs> that's, that's actually true. But I don't think they would have casted someone like Catherine Hahn unless she served some sort of purpose. I mean, they've the cast... I would argue yeah. they've cast more famous actors in more bit roles before. Like, Glenn Close was Nova Prime in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I agree. I, John I agree C. Riley. But she was, even though she was in a bit role, she was still quote unquote a, an important figure. I'm just saying, there, you know? like the Marvel. Marvel likes to do these no, things they do. where they go, "Here's a famous person." Here's a famous person. Yeah, well, they're exactly. not going to be a big in Guardians Two. Yeah. yeah, I know. Matt Damon is the actor in Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> 
I think Sam, Ta- I think Sam Ta- Neil, Sam Neil. I think Taika Waititi was just having fun with that. Well, and that's what I think it is. Yeah. I, I think it's a degree of if we cast these people, people, the nerds are going to look into it because we will. And yeah. we're going to theorize and we're going to guess. And that's part of the fun. Yeah, that is part of the fun. That's why we're doing this show. And then I would argue from a design, from a creative perspective, the fun then is how do you juke that to the left so that it's exactly what we don't expect it to be. Yeah. So you go, man, Matt Damon's going to be in Thor Ragnarok. And you start going, he could be this guy, this guy, this guy. Oh, this is going to be crazy. Love and Thunder. But and then he's just a dude. And he's just a dude. Well, I mean, he was in Ragnarok. He was, he was in my Ragnarok, point, right? yeah, as an actor. But yeah. you know, he he's a background been, he character. He could be Asgardian. So. Maybe he's not Asgardian. Who knows? Just a you know, good old space actor. Yeah, exactly. So that's you know, again, it's Asgardian Matt Damon. Would so. would they cast her? Would they cast Catherine Hahn in a bit role? If anybody's going to do it, I think Marvel's Marvel, going to do it. Marvel possibly as, as a distract. Um, but you know, again, WandaVision is setting so much of our our yeah. expectations for the Disney Plus shows that it, yeah. who knows. To to those ends, so we've hit our fifteen minute mark, uh, or the forty five minute mark. So we're get, we're getting Jesus, already? yeah, we're fifty two minutes. Oh, shit. Um, so I want to bring up the the real world stuff, because um, whole like two big things for me. One, goddamn Haywood, like. I told you he was a dick. This guy. They set him up to be a huge dickhead. Like, I've the whole time I've been like, he is your classic human who just walks in the room and goes, I'm scared of everything, so I'm gonna blow it up, guys. And I was like and when Monica starts calling him out, I'm like, Thank you. Exactly. Thank you so much. And then he shuts her back down when he's like, Maybe you're too close to this. Like basically saying that like Carol Dan, you're close to you know, yeah. Your your mother died and you're too close to this and you're not prepared. And I was just like, slap it. I, that's Slatton. why I love Darcy. She was like, "Hey, what do you know? It's the guy who, you know, it's the guy who formed his murder squad. Who almost got murdered by his own murder squad." And, and then <laughs> Jimmy Wu back. Maybe you shouldn't be discriminating against your coworkers, the only people who know what they're doing in this room, exactly. and we should solve this problem. He's like, "Oh, so oh, which, so which one of you is God like the, damn. yeah, is the snarky best friend or whatever?" I'm like, "You, you asshole, man, damn." And that's I've. I've seen so many people wanting Haywood to be like Mephisto or manipulating this. I don't think he's manipulating anything. No, he anything. has his own he, agenda. Because he's, he's yeah. like they said, you know, why Why is he monitoring Vision? Yeah. I, I just think because, you know, Vision was in Fort Sword facilities, and I think they were studying Vision to make him a weapon somehow. I agree. Whether, yeah. whether that was they wanted to get, like, some basic programming in there so they could just point and click him at well, enemies or whatever. Exactly. But Plus, yeah, that's, I Vision, don't think it's more than that. I think it's... We wanted to weaponize the Vision's body. Uh, you caught us, and now we need to get rid of that evidence. So we want to destroy Vision and yeah. Wanda. Ooh. Plus, Vision was still made of vibranium. Yeah. So there, there's all kinds of reasons to study Vision. Sure. And yeah, and him being basically a piece of shit. Yeah. Like you would figure that's the only reason why he would want Vision back. Yeah. He he didn't want Vision back because he was worried about the Vision as a person and a being. Um, I think this man's this man knows his whole career is about to get ruined. Yeah. And he's got one person who's going to stop him and it's Wanda and he's got every justification to blow her up. That's during that scene I immediately flash back to in Avengers with the council being like let's nuke New York. And Nick Fury's yeah. like what do you No, like oh, we got man, people in the field. We, we could save the city and they're like nuke. Yeah. Like this Manhattan. This is just a shrunk down version of this. This is Haywood going nuke New York, and then Monica going. You don't. You like, don't have to do that. Yeah. We just have to talk to her. Like we could talk her down probably, and he refuses. I'm. I'm stand firm. I don't think yeah. he's he's involved in the greater situation here. Yeah. Um, Nick Fury was like, I understand your plan, but it's a stupid, stupid ass plan. plan. You know. Yeah. And it's the same thing with Haywood. It's like yeah. I understand your plan, but it's a stupid plan. You know, that's why, you know, Rambo, Agent Wu, and Darcy, they go off on themselves. And, and, I, and I, I have to say, like, when, you know, Monica and Agent Wu both beat up those, you know, I had a big fist throw down when they, beat Absolutely. Up those, when they beat up those troops, man. A I was thousand like, percent. That's what I'm talking about, yes. And especially because, like, Jimmy comes off as such a non-threat exactly. all the time. He's like, I do magic tricks, and yeah, I make well, funny jokes. And you almost forget, like, he trained in Quantico. He's, a, and for the F- he's an FBI he's, agent. He's a trained FBI he's agent. He's a trained FBI that's agent. That's great. So he, he kno- of course, he knows how to fight. Yeah. You know, and seeing that, you're like... Yeah, he's an FBI agent. Why wouldn't he learn how to fight? It's so, that same kind of idea of like yeah. with with Shield agents like being competent at their job, like watching like Agents of Shield and like May is one of the best fighters yes. in the show. And you're like, 
that you would have to be because yeah. you're going to be fighting Nazis and supervillains yeah. and robot men and cyborgs and whatever. Like, yeah, you'd have to be pretty decent. Like, yeah. that was really cool to, to see us reminded of that. Yeah, that um, was excellent. And I, I would, you know, I would still like to bring <clears> up from the last episode that Mon- uh, Captain Rambo and Agent Wu are meeting Monica's astrophysicist hookup, friend. Astrophysicist friend. Yeah. So I'm wondering, possibly, like, is Marvel setting us up to where this could be somebody we know? This or is, somebody new? This is one of those things that I've, I haven't have been trying to think about at all. Ne- neither have because I. We, and we I'm don't sure have, everybody else yeah, is. There's, yeah. there's a million theories online. And yeah. again, I, this is the thing that I get frustrated about with the guessing, is like, I like to do an educated guess. Yeah. So I'll go, You if, if she had said, my astrophysicist friend who is X, like, in terms of, like, they were six foot tall, or they had three arms, or they graduated from this school, like, I would feel much more confident being like, oh, it could be this character, or this character, or this character, as opposed to, there's so many super scientists in the Marvel Universe, and you can use, I don't want to say you can use them interchangeably, but, you know, you look at um, the Hulk, Bruce Banner was a radiation specialist, and they made him, like, a time doctor, like, yeah. That shouldn't be anywhere in Bruce Banner's, like, field of study. Yeah, yeah, I think his focus was more on, like, bioengineering, which is why him and Stark create, made vision. Not not even bioengineering, and he's just a yeah. radiologist. Yeah, like, yeah, he's a radiologist. He's, he's a, you know. in theory, he knows, sure, radiation, and that was, like, they're in to, like, oh, he's manipulating quantum radiation to travel through time, but, like, the yeah. Hulk, in theory, shouldn't have been able to do that. But in comic books, super science is super science, so you could, you know, this could be... Um, this could be Reed Richards. Yes. This could be Valeria Richards. This could be the Blue Marvel. Doctor Brashear. I did, I did, read, I did like, read something that could like um, give a hint of like it could possibly be Reed Richards. Sure. You know, even though I did read, I was like, let's slow our roll. But at the same time, you never know since they brought in Evan Peters Quicksilver. Yeah. yeah. So now, good good thing we talked because I want to bring up something that yep. I I don't want us to overlook. Okay. Okay. All. Okay. This, the, part the part when, and I feel that, and I'm sure you feel it too, okay. that this is possibly how Monica Rambo gets her powers. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I was waiting is, for us to circle back around. Yes. That. Is Darcy telling her that every time you enter in and out of the energetic field, your molecular structure gets messed with? Gets messed with. So it's a possibility that, like, she goes into it one more time or whatnot. Real quick. Yes. Mutants. Yeah. And then, oh and no! Don't tell me yes. No, no. I, 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 I only say that because I did read somewhere that you know. Oh, this could possibly be the reason why we have mutants. Yeah. Now I don't agree that okay. that should happen. No, that's I, I, was, I don't. That to me, like I was as much as I, I don't want that either. No, I, as much as I love the give MCU, her superpowers. Should that is such a make cheap a way yeah. to bring in mutants. Okay, that is that's such a cheap. You know, uh, here's mutants. You know, that is such a cheap way to bring up mutants. I don't want that to happen. I hope it does not happen. But I feel that this could be a way for Monica Rambo to get her powers and possibly like, sure. be photon or you know whatnot. Yeah. So I would lean to it is interesting it's, that that happens. I don't because they they gave her mom the the code name photon, photon. in the the yeah. one plaque of her. Um, technically, in the comic books, Maria She's Captain Universe. Miss she's Miss? Captain Marvel for a time. She's Captain Marvel for Mon- a time in the 80s. Monica Rambeau has gone by Captain Marvel, Photon, and most recently Spectrum. Spectrum, yes, um, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Um, when she was part of... Um, I, I the, don't... Oh, I, God. Black, I don't know the breakdown yeah. of them, because she was Captain Marvel for a time. Well, I, I think it was in the 70s, but it may have been the 80s. It was in the 70s or 80s, I think um, I read. But she led the Avengers for a, a brief period of time. Yeah. like She was like a field leader kind of thing. Um, she for whatever reason, I don't because there wasn't a Captain Marvel. Didn't even have a Captain Marvel for a long mm-hmm. time until the mid '90s when Peter David introduced the son of Captain Marvel, Genis yeah. Vell. Genis Vell, I'm sorry. Um, and then he ends up losing the title for a while, and then it, it took until the early 2000s for Danvers to actually become Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, Maria ended up taking the name Photon for a while in the like early '90s. And then in the early 2000s, she became Spectrum. Um, and she has, like, a black and white costume. Okay. I, I have seen Marvel release some new merchandise where it's, like, black along the shoulders, comes to, like, here, and there's, like, a sword symbol, and okay. the rest of it's white. 
that really looks like Spectrum's costume design from more recent comics. Okay, so um, she wasn't. Was she? <clears throat> I, I can, was she part? Oh god, why am I not remembering this group? It was uh, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, Blue Marvel, the Ultimates. The Ultimates. This was Al Ewing's Ultimates after okay. the end of Secret Wars. Yeah. Was she part of? The, she was. was yes. She, yeah, she was part. She of was that part team. of that. Okay. Okay. They turned. Yeah, they they saved Galactus. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That was a great book. Great um, run. That's great run. that's what that's what I was thinking about. Um, Ultimates is one of the like biggest high concept yeah. books that I've ever seen before. Oh, like, Ultimates ah, I was love that. fantastic because of the because it was so out there, you know. Um, but I mean, it, it could that could lead into basically it's. It's a clever way for her to gain powers. It really is, especially if she goes back in there one more time sure. and then comes back out. Um, but <clears throat> I really hope that this doesn't lead to be like, this is how we get mutants. Yeah. You well, know? And that's, I, I do lean towards... I lean more towards Monica getting superpowers, just in general, because I, I really liked in that scene with Darcy, with her being like, it's changing your cells, and Monica reads that as meaning your cells are going to become cancerous. She yeah. watched her mother die. She has seen reports and blood work, and she's sick to death of it. And No, from, she didn't watch her mother die. Well, she, her mother like, was... I mean, her... She saw her go through cancer, She saw though. her go through cancer, like, she's, but... She's gotten the bad diagnoses before, and all you can do is try and live your life. Yeah, but what made it even <clears> more <throat> sad was before she disappeared, she actually... Her mother was actually on the verge of recovery. Which is why... Which is why I think Monica was so dismissive of it. Yeah. Because Wanda see, or Monica sees this and she just goes, "I'm dying," and that's fine. If yeah. that's the job, I'll do it. Because In what other what words, else can I, don't I do? Have much time. Yes. Yeah. I've, and I don't think she's looking at this going, "I'm gonna get electromagnetic energy spectrum yeah. powers." Dope. Yeah, she has um, no idea. But yeah, will will she become photon or spectrum? I don't know. I could see her taking up the name photon in honor of her mother yeah um i've always liked the name spectrum better personally i don't I like know why. the name spectrum better as well um and then i <laughs> photon just reminds me of pew pew yeah. like i don't know it's... um but and then given because i'm so i'm so literal and i love how stupid literal things can be i really like the idea that in captain marvel 2 you could have two <laughs> women named captain marvel and they like fight each other like i don't want this to be monica i don't want monica and carol to like hate each other like I'm cool there, there being is, a beef. There does seem to be like some disdain or beef and towards. I, and I want it to know, get settled. I just yeah. don't want it to be a, a forever thing. Some, like, for some reason, maybe it's because it could be because um, Monica reached out to Carol and said, "Hey, you know, like I don't know what you're doing out there in like the galaxies, but like your best friend, my mom, is dying of cancer." Yeah. Could you be here? And then like either Carol didn't respond or Carol was like, "You know, I love your mom, but." I'm too busy, like, across the galaxy, yeah. you know? I agree. And maybe she, Monica didn't realize how important Carol's job is throughout the galaxy, and she probably had some sort of disdain towards her that she never visited her mom. That's, I think Monica felt like she and her mom were abandoned by this amazing person that they met. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think that's playing into Monica's sympathies for Wanda, where Monica also lost her mom. Yeah. She's And that was only, like days ago in our timeline roughly yes. so like it's not like that grief isn't fresh for her like i don't want to say haywood has a point but even he points out like maybe you sympathize too much yeah. this is too fresh for you and she's probably still thinking along those lines and the idea of maybe someone could have helped me maybe carol yeah. could have helped us and she didn't because haywood considers because she's got other important space people to say fuck yeah. space people like Hay Haywood considers Wanda like a terrorist weapon, but Maria is, you know, Mon Monica is like, nah, bro, like she needs help. Yeah. You know, she really needs help. I was there firsthand. I know she really needs help. And she felt that pain because yeah, even Norm did. brings up like the, the emotional grief that she is forcing on these people yeah. by being like mentally connected with them. Um, oh, this was a stupid, I haven't. I haven't put any more thought into this. Mm -hmm. This was something I thought of last week after our last episode. In terms of who could be manipulating Wanda, who isn't already, like, a candidate, um, the Psycho Man would be a really good uh, potential, Psycho too. Man. The Psycho Man was a, a supervillain from the microverse, the quantum realm oh. in the MCU, um, who grows and shrinks. But his main thing is he has a device that, like, he controls people's emotions. 
So like he would show up and be like, everyone's going to be angry, and a mob would start fighting, and then he'd like rob a bank or whatever, and then the Avengers or Fantastic Four would show up and punch him in the face, and like they would typically have to overcome their fears or anger or sadness. Yeah. So in terms of somebody amplifying Wanda's emotions and broadcasting them to a whole town and being able to control people, Psycho Man could get to that level. It's possible. And we know that the Quantum Realm is going to be more involved thanks to Ant-Man 3. Um, but it, it's, it's, again, it's also a left field it's, from out of nowhere. It, it's a left field from out of nowhere, but... I'm just so tired of seeing Mephisto as the answer for everything. Yeah, I, I can I can see that. <laughs> but I don't know if Marvel Studios is going for more of an impact of yeah. who's behind it, because if they decide it's Psycho Man, then I guess, like, in a way, even though you and I would find that intriguing, everyone else would be like know who's psycho man like that's you know they probably wouldn't feel the impact that like psycho man was behind this whole thing it's like well yeah who's, but the, who's this guy i would argue the audience no. is going to have that same feeling with mephisto mephisto I, is such a non-character like he's just i'm evil because i'm evil like he's yeah. the least interesting other than the red skull he's like the least interesting super villain like in the MCU canon, because all he does is go, I'm evil, and I guess I'll do something evil today, everybody. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can see that, Send but at me the your same soul. time, he's still more well-known than Psycho Man. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't know if, like, I don't know, maybe Feige would be like, you know. Oh, We've yeah, had Ego the Living Planet. Man. Yeah. No one was demanding an Ego the Living Planet as a villain. No, they weren't. Yellow but, Jacket. You know, they kind of entwine him with being Peter's dad. I'm just saying, so. in in terms of in terms of national visibility, Psycho uh, Man and Mephisto are on the same well, level. Here's the thing, though: um, they didn't hide the fact that Ego was going to be the villain in Guardians of the Galaxy. They sure. didn't hide the fact that Ghost was going to be the villain in Ant Man and Wasp. They are they they're messing with our heads to be like, who is behind this? You know, like they're they're wanting us to try and solve the mystery 100% of who's behind this. That's the point of a mystery so, story. So I don't know if like they want somebody like I don't know Psycho Man to be the main villain and build up this whole mystery behind it if they want to introduce somebody that's going to have a big impact not on, not just in this show but with the MCU going forward. So I, I See the so, the, so the I, trade off that know, I have right. with that is if we're going to go with the idea if we accept that this is Mephisto and the idea is we're going to introduce Mephisto here because he's our big bad for the rest of this season, mm -hmm. that's like introducing Thanos in the first Iron Man movie. That's so, like, not what Marvel does. Like, Marvel introduces small ideas and then builds them up big. Like, I would, I would see the introduction of Psycho Man as a way to draw the audience more into the quantum realm, which draws you more into the multiverse, which draws you more into whatever else we're going to face it is, the rest of the season. I mean, that season. is what it's about. Because I, I so. don't... Uh, I'm not against Mephisto. I, I do think, as little evidence as we have, Mephisto's mm -hmm. the best thing mm -hmm. I've seen suggested so far. Um, but, I mean, I, I would say <clears> that that's because, like... I know you said Mephisto doesn't do much in the comics, but, like, in the original comics of WandaVision, his life essence was in the twins yeah i if don't know if there's, they're still going to go with that there's two great mephisto stories mm -hmm. and one of them is him fucking with wanda which took 20 years for marvel to do anything with so i would argue it's a little hard to say this is one of his greats and then two he tricked johnny blaze into becoming ghost rider mm -hmm. check check that's it that's all mephisto does so it, if if like the idea that people keep coming at me going like Mephisto's the big bad and I'm like Mephisto's as important to the Marvel Universe structure as like I don't know the nasty boys are to the X-Men <laughs> like he's a they don't do anything yeah. like I, I mean I could also go with that and say okay you say that it took 20 years for Mephisto to kind of mess with Wanda but at the same time, I could also be like, well, it took Bucky 50 years to be go from Bucky to sure. the Winter Soldier. 100%. And the MCU did that in, in, in two movies. 100%. You know? But that's so, the trick with the movies, is they take these things that weren't important and they make them important. important. So if they, were going, if they were going to do Psycho Man, this is a good way to go, wow, Psycho Man went from being a piece of shit to like a legitimate threat kind of thing. Like, same thing with Purple Man. Um, in the Jessica Jones show... 
Purple Man in the comics was a joke. Yeah. Like, for decades he was a joke. And they made him relevant. And and Bendis made one good story using him, and they did a whole Netflix season they based made, around that. And I'll him, fully admit, it's one of the best pieces of MCU show I I've seen. He was a great villain. And plus, there was, um, you know, I told you about Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes. There was an episode involving the Purple Man as the main villain. Oh, yeah? And, uh, yeah, and it was great because the setup was, um, I can't remember who the main hero was, but they woke up in a time where, like, all the Avengers were basically villains, and Tony Stark kind of ruled the planet yeah, and made cool. his own technology, but it turns out that Purple Man was behind the whole thing. Sure. And he manip- manipulated all the Avengers, and it was a great episode. That's cool. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it's possible, like, they could set up Psycho Man to be the villain, but then at the same time, maybe he's working for someone. And that's possible. So that's possible too. Especially again, it again it depends how much you restructure because you could have that Psycho Man is a minion of Kang, who we know is going to show up later on yeah. down the line. Kang is a time traveler. Depending how you look at it, time travels the same thing I as traveling through Kang. alternate realities. Introducing Kang in the next Ant Man and Wasp movie that's very interesting. Yeah, and that's that's another like to to our very point of this doesn't make sense like. Kang is not one of Ant Man's bad guys. No, he's not. That's why it's so <laughs> look, interesting. Look like, at all. Out of like, all the movies you can introduce him in, like I don't Ar- Ant Man and Wasp, but that means like somehow he's gonna serve a purpose somehow. Yeah. It's called Quantum Mania. Yeah. So they're obviously gonna travel through the quantum realm. Yeah. You know, all these movies are gonna coincide with Doctor Strange. That's what they say. Cocker Str- Doctor Strange is the nucleus that's all, all these movies you almost just yes. named the porn parody of Cockter Strange so don't steal my idea <laughs> <laughs> damn it that was accidental all of a sudden, I'm not gonna wait two years down the line when Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness comes out and all of a sudden you're gonna see like Cockter Strange I'm sure you know? I'm sure somebody already did it yeah the multiverse of you know masturbation is I don't know yeah you can but do like, it like yeah but, but I, again, I don't know. It, I don't like, know. It's it's the it, again. It's the fun part of all of this is I don't know. And you could exactly. re- you could restructure it in such a way that Ant Man or not Ant Man, but you could restructure it in such a way that the Psycho Man is a minion of Kang who sent him back in time to manipulate Wanda like this to cause events that will lead yeah. to Kang. Like that's the trick with writing a Kang story is you're not just writing what he did now. You have to write what he did 50 years ago well, that is going to affect now. Do. And what is he doing now that's going to affect 20 years in the future because that's when he was a teenager. Yeah. And, uh, and just, it can go super big like, or super what, small. Like, what, some, like what's going to happen now that's going to cause him to come back in time? Yeah. Somehow. Why now? You know, at why all now? points in time. Exactly. What's going to happen? Like, so, is something going to happen in, in Ant-Man and Wasp? Is something going to happen in this series where Juan is going to do something bad and it's going to affect not just this timeline in reality, but like his timeline in the future? Sure. Like, you know, you, you know, as we all know, it's the MCU. We have to think of all, all these like different types of conclusions because it's not just movies anymore. It's shows now. Yeah. It's series. You know, you can say, oh, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was, you know, blah, 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 blah. But that wasn't Marvel Studios, okay? That was ABC making their own show yeah. to let you guys know this kind of takes place they, in continuity with the movies. And I'll, but I'll argue they did the best they could. They did the best they given could. Given that they had it. different creative teams, different corporate structures behind them, yeah. different filming schedules. They did the best they could to integrate Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. into the rest of it. But they still couldn't do... The degree we're seeing now, where everything's under one roof, yes. with one group of people that, producing this thing, yeah. and it's it's a lot easier to weave those narratives together. Because that was back when Jeff Loeb was like executive producer in charge of like all the yeah. Marvel series, and you know Marvel Studios was like, "Fuck you, Jeff Loeb." After I mean, humans, I don't like, think they were like "fuck you, Jeff Loeb," but I don't, I think they were like that didn't work. We're going to ignore that. No, I'm just saying, fuck way. you, Jeff Lowe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, for Don't in, put for words in Marvel's out, for, mouth. For coming out with Inhumans. Like, fuck you, Jeff Lowe. You did great on the Netflix series, you know. But, like, fuck you for, like, completely ruining Inhumans. I but blame, I, Ike, I just, I I blame just, Ike Merle Pearl Mutter more than I blame Jeff Lowe. Yeah, I Pearl Personally. He, he was an asshole. And but it I was don't, a good, and I it was great point. that they got rid of him and just left everything to Kevin Feige. Yeah. You know, that, that was a great idea. And so we've been brought to these series, and now the series are more intoned to the movies. And like I told you earlier, 
it's I, I I love that they're giving uh, these characters, even though we do love them, they were basically secondary characters in the movies, but now they're front and center. Yeah. And it makes their character development so much better, so much more interesting. Like, like you mentioned earlier, Paul Bettany is the Vision. Like yeah. we all knew he was a great actor, but like the Vision, you know, was you know automaton. The like, Vision was the Vision was such a boring character. Yeah, he in was. the comics that he, yeah, it's, when they were like he's going to be an Age Voltron, I was like I don't, I don't care. That's yeah, fine. That's exactly. Whatever. It's like, okay, he's cool. He can lift Molnir, you know, whatever. He's going to be the difference because he was in part of the Ultron storyline. But in this, he's such a good character. You know, I've every episode, I like him more and more. I really do. That's why when he was tearing apart, you know, we knew yeah. he wasn't technically going to die. But at the same time, like, I was like Darcy. I'm like, no vision. But like, that's, and I'm, I still think this ends with him dead, personally. Yeah. So like more, the, more there than was likely, there yes. was definitely a moment for me where like out of everyone here one person will die to save this town and it would be the vision yeah. emotionally. Paul Bettany did uh, say like the ending of WandaVision will shock people. Oh, I hope it's so. I'm, I don't want to say I hope that it's a sad shock, but like I don't you know, I don't want him dead. I just if they're going to kill him off, I could see them happening. I could see them doing it here. Yeah. I mean, it's going to it's going to suck that like, you know, once we go, get to the end of WandaVision and if it ends on such a huge cliffhanger that we don't know the next time we're going to be introduced in this story. Is it going to be introduced in the Doctor Strange? And if it is, like, how many times are they going to delay it? And this is something you know? I discussed with one of my coworkers. Because Doctor Strange doesn't come out for, what, like two more years? Because it's 2021 now. I would say possibly later next year. Yeah, and that's yeah. assuming... It gets so released it on time. Get delayed again. again. Yes. And so there's there's definitely a part of me where like, will your audience be willing to watch a TV show, wait almost two years to see the movie that then follows up on those plot lines, so that you can watch another TV show to go watch another movie to watch another movie to watch like, we've never seen that kind of interaction in yeah. your audience before, um, and even you know even in comic books like if you introduced a plot line in like one year and then you waited two years to follow up on it i'd call you crazy like your book's canceled by the time you hit year two like no way are you gonna have time to follow up on that i mean they really entrust us as fans to like yeah. have patience and that's and you know? you know a lot of people couldn't get past one episode of wandavision, one episode of WandaVision. So, well, so the technically I, two because yeah. you know one and two premiered at the same time so the the idea that you're gonna trust us to watch all of this show and watch Black Widow, and Eternals, and Bucky and Falcon, and Loki, and then maybe we get Doctor Strange as a follow-up, seems so far away. So that's, you know, I've I've discussed before, I, I see this ending, and then, you know, the idea of, does Doctor Strange show up at the end? And then we wait a year and a half? That yeah. seems like a bad idea. But I don't know. Like, again, does Mar like Marvel's done it before, where they're like, Peter Parker will return in Spider-Man. Uh, I mean, it, it's is showing Doctor Strange Homecoming. showing Doctor Strange showing up at the end could be a uh, could be a possibility because you know what he says in Infinity War to you know Tony Stark you know when Stark is like you know whoa, 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 what is your what is your special thing like making like you know animal you know balloon animals and shit and Doctor Strange is like you know protecting your reality douchebag yeah well you know guess what Wanda's doing she's fucking with reality yeah so. You know, you never know. It could be, and that could lead into the multiverse of madness. Sure. But, you know, with the delay, the MCU, they had to change up what movies are being released because it was supposed to be Black Widow and then Eternals. Just release it! But now it's Black Widow and then Shang-Chi. Just release so, the movie! That's what I'm I'll pay saying. for the movie! That's what I'm saying. But what? no, no, they, they put an article out yesterday what? saying that, no, we're not going to... We're still have a plan. We're still having a plan of releasing Black Widow in theaters. We're, we're Black both, Widow is not going to be released on Disney Plus. For whatever like, reason, we're both madly gesturing at my TV like it's my TV's fault that Black Widow hasn't been on it. Yet. Fuck your TV, <laughs> okay? But that's like um, if you can pre-order Raya and the Last Dragon already. I know. Why well, can't just let me buy it? Just let me buy Black Widow. I'll buy man. it. I'll pay you twenty dollars now for it, and when it drops in theaters, I'll still go see it. Like I'll sign a contract. Like. Charge me $30 yeah. for the movie and give me an automatic ticket to go see it when it comes out in theaters. And well, just, like, have that count and then you count the redemptions or whatever. Yeah. Like, it's the future! 
Why do I have to wait for a theater release? I mean, you is, is, is this Disney's idea? Is this Marvel Studios' idea? Is it a culmination of both that they're not wanting to release Black Widow on Disney Plus? Like, are they thinking like, no, no, we want to wait because we still believe that we're going to make money this is, when it releases in the theater. They want right? this to be The Rock's cheat day. They've been starving us for a Marvel movie for like two years, and then they're going to be like, guess what? It's in theaters, and they expect everyone to go see it ten times on opening weekend. And even if, even if I like the movie, I'll still probably only see it once, like opening week, just because I'm not, I don't, I tend yeah. not to like to rewatch movies immediately, immediately, immediately. Like I feel like you'd you be know, more I, likely to see it twice than I, I would. I would be more likely but to like, see it three times because that's yeah. my that's my MCU rule. In, uh, unless I absolutely <laughs> love a movie, like let's say Winter Soldier and Infinity War, I'll sure. watch it five times in a the theater. Like, you know, Black Widow, I will see it multiple times in a the theater because you know, one, it's the MCU. And two, like, I have a theater right down the road from me. Sure. So I just go ahead, you know, I have an A-list. I can see that shit anytime. Yeah. You know, but Black Widow could be a movie I could probably see maybe twice, I would say. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's Black Widow, and of course we have interest in it because it's the MCU, but, like, it's not one of those movies that, like, oh my god, it's so appealing to me, I can't wait for Black yeah, Widow. There's, there's not like, a lot of hype for it. Yeah, and it's we know it's two years past release date. Like we're getting, it's getting and, there. And the more Marvel stuff that well, gets released without it, the it's more we're time. moving past it already. Yeah, like, exactly. at what point, from a storytelling perspective, is this gonna is Black Widow gonna become the new mutants of Fox's X Men movies? And then it comes <laughs> out, and everybody goes, "Man, it wasn't that bad," which just yeah. means it's the least worst out of a bunch of bad movies. But like. I know Fox had their own reasons about delaying New Mutants. Oh, and like we know that like it's because of the pandemic that they keep delaying Black yeah. Widow and everything. You know, that's, so that's you've got a reasons. streaming service. Well, you have a streaming service that you're giving out. you're giving Marvel Studios series on. Yeah, okay, and you emphasize on that. And these Marvel stu- these Marvel Studios shows they they don't just have like. You know, they put secondary characters in there, which you end up loving, you know, like Darcy, like Agent Wu. You know, I never expected seeing Agent Wu and Ant-Man and Darcy from Thor yeah. to come together and work so brilliantly. You know, that's great. But they're they're having all these characters. Like, everybody freaking loves Tom Hiddleston as Loki. You're giving him his own show now. Yeah. So we're definitely going to, we're going to be intrigued by that. Everybody's wondering like who's going to be the next Captain America, whether it be Bucky or Falcon. So of course we're going to be intrigued by that. So we're looking forward to all these shows. You know, I'm sure WandaVision. Everybody was like, oh, okay, we'll see what happens. But then after like the first few episodes, not everybody's into it and thinking, what the hell is going to happen? Because they know they know that like, you know, putting these characters front and center, we're going to end up loving them anyway. Just like Armor Wars with Rhodey, like I told you earlier. Yeah. You know, we. You and I can't wait for that show. Yeah. That's gonna be free. We know that's gonna be awesome. You know, that's gonna be an awesome ass show. We can't wait for that shit. And that's what we love about these shows is like we know none of these shows are going to be like the other. You know, they're all gonna be different. She Hulk's gonna be completely different. You never know. They can fucking put Matt Murdock in the She Hulk show because sure. she's a lawyer and he's a lawyer. You know? It they even hinted that, you know, oh you never know who's gonna be in these shows coming up. You never know. So, you know, they, they know that we're interested, and we're going to be interested for a long time. You know, you never know, man. The fucking shows could end up being better than the movies are coming out with. Well, and that's... So, and, and I've always advocated for... Comic books are a sequential form of storytelling. The whole idea absolutely. is that you, you consume little pieces over a long period of time to create a larger narrative and a, a greater sense of investment and depth to the characters. And it's hard to do that in a movie. It and is. You, you look at most of the comic book movies that we've gotten, and they try to adapt these huge storylines or too many characters, and it doesn't work because you're trying to do too much in an hour and a half to two hours. And, you know, you start to get past two hours, and I'll... I'll fully admit, like, Infinity War and Endgame, the biggest concerns was the size of the cast. Yes. And could you tell a story <clears throat> with 20-ish characters and have it work and be emotional? And to Marvel's credit, I think they did, but it's a lot easier to and tell... Even, even Endgame was more of an original yeah, story. Yeah, as opposed to an adaptation yes. of anything. It was a, a, a officially licensed Marvel fanfic. Yes. Um, but... I, I argue that the idea of like a Disney Plus show, these limited series kind of runs, 
make more sense to me in terms, again, of same kind of things. You can get into greater character depth. Yes. You can explore more of the world. There are ideas and concepts that aren't going to sell in a movie theater that maybe you could sell on a TV show a lot better. Um, so just, again, investing in the Disney Plus stuff just makes sense to me from a storytelling yes. perspective more than a financial perspective. And like you said, that's why they hold off on releasing Black Widow. They want a bajillion dollar box office which I honestly don't think Black Widow would have made to begin with. Like, I think Black Widow would do healthy. I think it would do healthy. But it's not going to be Black Panther. It's not going to be Infinity War. It's not going to be Endgame. Like, Even Far From Home made over a billion dollars. Yeah. And, well, and the trick with that is Spider-Man's a way more beloved overall character than Black Widow. And it was Widow. right after Endgame. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not saying there's not an audience or a demand for Black Widow. I just don't think there's the degree that the degree. they... I see this all the times in the comics where people would be like, man, we really love X character. Make a book with X character. And they would put a book out and it's canceled inside of six issues because the vocal fans are vocal, but they don't pay or they don't care or they go, it's going to get canceled in six issues anyways. And then it does like, you know, and it's, it's, I see it all the time with the comic books and I'm afraid of that kind of thing with the movie. And that's, I think that's, not to try and bury the movie before it ever gets released, but I think the same thing would happen with Black Widow, where it's going to drop, and it'll do well, yeah, but it's it not going to do gangbusters. And now I think they'll just go, well, you know, the pandemic really hurt our sales, which is why I just, just release it. It's like we knew just that. Just charge me for it. Yeah, like, we already knew that it was going to hurt your sales. Yes. I'm, either, either charge me for it and give it to me, or do a, like, Disney Plus discount of, like, you have to pay $5 to watch it. And I'm yeah. sure most of us would willingly pay five dollars to watch it multiple times. Like I, again, you're gonna see it three times in theaters anyways. Wouldn't you rather just pay five dollars to watch it in your home three times, and then when it drops in DVD in a year, then you could buy it? Yeah. We could own it already. We could own it already. That's if what it I had keep been saying. Released. That's what I keep saying. You know, it's kind of crazy that like Black Widow should have been released on Blu-ray back in September. Yeah. You know, we should have had Eternals already back in November. Yeah. This coming May was supposed to be like shang chi yeah so like you know it's pretty crazy we all know it's pretty crazy what the pandemic did you know but uh it, it's interesting like i go back to what you said about how the shows are more in line with i guess like comic books as to where like each book is episodic in its own just way. the the style of storytelling the, the style of lines storytelling, up a lot exactly more. but you know and I also think it's a good way at the same time for Marvel to kind of um, reflect the characters they use in the show with more of their comic counterpart. Because I think back to the end uh, the end of the Loki trailer when he's all dressed in like the presidential suit and gear. Vote Loki. And the, yeah, vote Loki. And the first thing you and I thought of was like, he looks exactly like he did in the cover of the comic. Yeah. Like it's, it's brilliant, you know, when they show him like... Oh, expect it's like he looks exactly he's, like he's the, still got like the hordes on the, the horn nice thing, pinstripe the nice suit. suit with the buttons and everything uh, he looked exactly like his comic counterpart 100 you know? and it and it was great me and you loved that and and it's almost like marvel studios knows that as well well and it's it's because you could get away with something like that for a half hour to yes. 40 minute tv show exactly that couldn't be Loki's costume for a two hour long movie of him manipulating Thor trying to take over the galaxy or whatever. Yes, and exactly. it, same same kind of thing with the all of the changes that we've seen in WandaVision, where the characters' outfits change from episode to episode. Um, even yes. if underneath it all, Vision continues to revert to like his superhero costume when he chooses to be yes. himself type of deal. Um, and that's I would say that's more to spare Paul Bettany from being in the makeup chair for like six to eight hours yeah. as often as he would need yes, to be. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I just it just frustrates me that we have a delivery vehicle for Black Widow that maybe you're not going to make a million dollars, but you'll make money. Yeah. And they're just sitting there going, no. It it I know. it feels like a bully like pinning you down, and they're like holding your wallet above your face, and just going, "You want your wallet back? You want your wallet back? You can't have <laughs> you it. Can't it's have right it. here. Just take it. Thanks for just the lunch take money, it. chumps. Yeah, and it's just, I'm willing to give you the money. Yeah. You just have to give give me the thing I want. I'll give you the money. I just um going 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 back to the show. You brought up Vision and everything, you know, and this happened back in episode five too. That he can just you know like vision realizes that even though he has no idea who he was in the past you know he didn't even know his ass was an avenger 
But he still knows that he could basically touch someone's mind and bring them back to the reality they are actually in and get them out of that trance that possibly Wanda put them in. Like him knowing that and then him reverting them back, I, I thought was an interesting touch. So he knows that Wanda can't control him. So, I I'm wondering, like, uh, to me, this is him doing him doing that to, like, certain people. Like, I'm wondering, like, is he, we know he's probably going to keep using that. But, like, who's he going to, who's he going to use it to next? Is it going to yeah. be somebody important? Like, you know, how's he going to know the I, truth? I would argue like, we, we haven't seen anybody more important than it's going to be Darcy. Because the only other character we have of importance in Westview is, is Agnes, and he touched he, he touched, touched Agnes, and Agnes was just like freak out. Yeah. She didn't have any secrets or master plan that she revealed. Darcy knows what Haywood wants with Vision. Vision. She saw the file. Yeah. She's got the intel. She just has to be able to get it to somebody. It's a matter of will the Vision, especially given this is a this is probably the biggest reset that we're going to see with Westview expanding the illusion encompassing more people. Will Darcy be able to break through the programming? Will Monica or Jimmy be able to break through the programming to contact Darcy yeah. inside of the field? Will they go inside the field to maybe rescue Darcy if their astrophysicist friend has a way in? Or Monica, would because Monica is still she still wants to go back in? Yeah, yeah. Well, Monica's dead set on She's getting in there and getting resolving the situation Wanda somehow. So I I could see her getting a suit from somebody and then going inside and that becomes like her costume for like the rest of photon because, splash spectrum. because but vision was right there where basically darcy was handcuffed yeah assuming wanda doesn't just reset everything yeah. and vision's back at the house and we're starting the next it's, episode yeah, exactly i could if from a narrative standpoint she's the only person left who knows anything more yes. than anybody involved other than maybe pietro or wanda herself um and I don't see that confrontation happening now. If if Wanda's our big villain for the show, then Vision's our hero. Vision would have to confront her in episodes eight or nine, or maybe the secret episode ten I keep hearing about online, which I don't know if that's a thing. Rumors really? Are, I did not I did not read that. There was I I didn't read the article because I'm not worried about I'm gonna watch whatever they release, so I don't worry about yeah. it. Um, but I think CBR had an article that they filmed they may have filmed a secret episode ten. We'll see. I don't. I don't personally think it's likely because I feel like it makes more sense to have a break week between WandaVision and then Bucky yeah, and Falcon. Yeah, and then Bucky and Falcon. Yeah. And I believe it's legitimately a week. Falcon um, and Winter Soldier. Yeah. Whatever. Well, whatever. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and baby. I, I still and Bucky baby Yoda's Falcon. name's Grogu. No one gives a shit. He's still Baby Yoda. Like. I'm gonna call him Grogu. I'm gonna call him Grogu. But I, I understand. Yeah. Yes. That's the. From a. It's fine. Right. But that's the only the only other person that he would have to use that on to gain any new insight into their situation would be Darcy. Yes. And it's just a matter that's, of what is she going to be. That's actually good. Yeah. And hey, what do you know? That's something else that we kind of came up with. I love that like I was I was literally getting to the point where I was gonna say, Okay, we've been ranting about Black Widow for like twenty minutes, let's that's, wrap this up. That's why I went <laughs> back to the I was like, Okay, and then, as interesting as this is, this could be actually saved for something else. And then our last like two minutes is just like Oh, this is what the next episode's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, okay, I think now we need what a to go, quest. I think now we need to go back to this series. Well, that's, you know? I think it's time to call it because we're we're at an hour and a yes. half. But but I am I am glad you know because I wanted to go back because I thought of that when you what mentioned a, vision. What a way to come back around clutch! Thank like, you. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. And we come we came up with something else with that. Yeah, so. Boom. We were we were on we Boom. were going way off track and then at we the last second we like come right back in before the finish line. Just off. That's why I wanted to. I was like, hold on, let's go oh, back. Let's turn around here. Let's <laughs> let's talk. Let's go back to Wandavision. Let's talk about something before we that's decide to be. end it. That's he'll he'll do that to Darcy. Darcy will be like, this is what's really going on. You need to do something about it. Monica will go back into the hex. She'll be confronting Wanda going, you need to stop this. And then Vision will show up and you'll have this, like, not, I don't want to call it a fight because I don't think we're going to get too physical with it. No. But I think it'll be a showdown it's between. It's going to be tragic. Yes. Somehow. It'll, it'll be Monica going, I know this hurts, but you are hurting more people doing this. You're doing to them what was done to you. And Vision will be there going, you can't keep doing this as well. Even, just let me die and let everything else resolve. And then we'll get to yeah. ho hopefully a happy ending. Because <laughs> we'll see. I don't. 
think so because he loves Wanda but at the same time he knows that he could possibly be the only one that can stop her yeah I mean he tells her as much in yeah. at the end of episode five he's like, I'm the only thing you can't control can I you have to stop this yeah that's he's because that's the thing he yeah. just r- real quick at the beginning of episode six you know he was like oh you know I'm part of the neighborhood watch and, and he wasn't reset as he has been either exactly between episodes yes. he he wasn't reset he and still knew whole, something was up i'm gonna go out because i'm part of the neighborhood watch but in turn no it was him investigating yeah. and tricking wanda into believing you know i'm rider's reign again no he wasn't rider's reign he's trying to find everything he's investigating to what's going on and like the more you know the more he dives into it you know like the more the more it stakes yeah basically you know yeah awesome Okay, awesome we're shit. we're gonna wrap this up here then, because like I said, we're running we're running pretty long. Yes. Um. Thank you guys for joining us again. Thank you guys. Uh, I hope you had a good time listening to this. We we always do. If you sat through that Black Widow rant, props to you. Props that, to you. Literally, like as we were talking about it, I was like, I might just edit this bit out. <laughs> well, <laughs> this was going along. This like is going like along. That's why I came back to Wandavision. I was like, we're losing track. I'm uh-huh. like, we're 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 kind of diving out to our actual subject circle circle the horse circle yeah so i'm kind of glad I, i'm glad i came back to wandavision because we came up with something else yeah and we're so, yeah we're, before we get off track again again thank you Ephraim, uh Always. for joining me thank Absolutely. you folks for joining us thank on this you guys uh, Love again you guys. thanks for the support uh, we know it's you know we know it's a stepping stone but like thank you so much friends and family for supporting this yes. and hopefully this is just the beginning We'll see you guys next week with another episode of Whatever This Is.